Hi there, and welcome to Intricacies, a series dedicated to teaching you the finest aspects of Azir. Today, let's talk about drifting. Drifting is the art of bending the path of shifting sands in order to extend the range and destination of your dash, as you can see here. A basic drift is easy to perform. Simply place your soldier, use shifting sands, and finally bend your arc with Q before you reach your soldier. The key to perfecting this technique is timing. To get over larger walls or multiple walls, it is paramount to properly time the use of conquering sands. At a basic level, try and use conquering sands when as close to your soldier as possible without ending the dash, though timing is not all there is to it. The position at which you start your dash is also very important to where you end up. Take this famous drift wall for example. There are many places you can end up while drifting over the wall, but some areas are more difficult than others. The easiest place to end up is directly across from the wall as your starting position has no impact on where you land. Drifting here is effective, but it places you under range of the tower and at risk of CC locking you down under turret. What we want to do is drift around the entire section of wall to get out of tower range. This also helps to get to enemies further down the lane and is almost impossible to counter because you will end up behind them no matter what. Let's take a look at this clip from a match during the Trick2G vs Wolfpack tournament. My team is fighting and I see opportunity for a play. I place my soldier over the wall. Pay close attention to how I walk down a bit before initiating shifting sands. This is because the closer I am to the destination I want to end up, the more I can bend my shifting sands. I pull my soldier all the way around the wall to get to the ideal landing point. Now I am behind the enemy team and in great position to wall them off. From voice comms, I know Nunu is starting his ult and I see opportunity present itself for an ultimate. I flash onto the enemy team and pin three of them to the wall in Nunu ult. This results in an astounding win for our team and the game turns around completely in our favor. Let's recap what we've learned so far. First, the most important aspect of a drift is timing, but it's not everything. It's also very important to adjust your starting position based on the desired destination in order to curb the drift as much as possible. Now, let's learn what mastering this technique can do for you in your games. An Azir with perfection of drifting changes the entire map. A master at drifting makes Summoner's Rift their playground and the enemy team the nerdy kids with rich parents, waiting to be beaten up and have their lunch money taken. No one is safe. As I showed you earlier with this clip, the enemy team was destroyed by an expert flank from around one of the biggest walls in the game. Not only does mastering this help you with flanks from behind, it can also help you engage or create picks, even from right in front of your opponent's face. In this clip, I changed the game by letting the enemy team know that if they get anywhere near my soldier, they are at risk of death. Not only am I standing right in front of Graves, he can also see my soldier right next to him. I see this lack of respect and I will not let it stand. I drift on top of him and put him in his place. With a well-timed Soraka ultimate, I get out scot-free and I put the fear of God in the enemy team for the remainder of the game. Thank you for watching the inaugural episode of this series. I hope to see you all next week for episode 2, where we talk about the intricacies of soldier placement and how it can affect your games tremendously. Thank you once again for watching, and if you'd like to see more of this series, let me know.